Hello everybody. Uh, this is Josh from CE Datum. Uh, today I wanted to show you how to do a uh, service and maintenance on a newly found CED player. Uh, I picked this one up a couple months ago in a big lot of discs and players and I haven't touched it yet. It's just been sitting in the garage. Um, as you can see it's a little dusty. It's a little uncared for. But uh, this is an SGT-075 and it's the lowest level of the uh, FG level, FG line of players. Uh, the only functions it had was rewind and fast forward, visual search. Uh, it's the light switch model. Uh, this is going to be the same for all the FG model players, same service and maintenance. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is spin this bad boy around. Uh, you got three screws right here. One, two, three. Take those out uh, and then flip the player over. This one I can hear something rattling around inside, so that's probably not good, but we'll get, we'll get to that. Uh, and then on the bottom, you're going to have some screws right here all the way around the outside edge. Um, those are going to be a quarter inch socket uh, if you want to take those out. Uh, and then uh, we'll continue. All right, uh, so once you get all those screws out uh, from the bottom and from the back, uh, then you're gonna wanna lift up on the back of the case. And then since this light switch is there, you're gonna wanna lift it up from the back. Hold on here, I'm gonna set you down for a second. Now let's see, where can I put you? So you want to press it from the side, lift up on the back, and then pull it off just like that. On the uh, SGT250, uh, there's going to be some long legs that come out. So you're going to want to be careful that you lift it straight up and then just kind of wiggle it until it comes out. If you try to force it up, you're going to break off those legs and you have to re-glue them all back on. Oh, I should also show you on the inside cover here, uh, there's going to be instructions on uh, what all the different test points are, uh, what kind of grease to use. Um, and then on some of the other ones, it actually has another instruction thing that shows like where you're supposed to actually lubricate and stuff like that. Yeah, like here's the cover for a JK one. It's got way more information. This is how you change the uh, uh, the gears and stuff and whatnot. So anyways, once we got the cover off, uh, this is what it looks like. You're gonna have your circuit board on top if it's a stereo model, you'll have another little circuit board right here connected to these that's got the stereo board on it. Uh, you got your tone arm, your stylus arm here. Uh, this is uh, going to be your servo gear over here. And you can see there's a little tiny belt down there. That's your servo belt. And then there's also going to be a turntable belt, uh, which we'll get to. But um, So your next step, uh, you're going to have four screws uh, right here and here. And here and here and then this board will flip over and then there's going to be a bar in there to take out and stuff I'll show you that once I get this board off okay so once you get those screws off uh, this board will just flip over uh, you can get some books or something to set it on so that it's not like bending too far uh, but I got a workbench right here that's leaning on so it's fine I also like to get separate cups for all my screws just so I don't mix anything up um, so this is the bar I was talking about. Um, sometimes it sits on top like this and sometimes it actually like wedges into a little slot. But um, it's going to be pretty much the same deal. And then sometimes there's also a little rolling wheel here. But um, this one doesn't have it. Uh, there's just one screw holding that on right there. And then we can take that off. Uh, I'll get another cup for that guy. Just just because it should be the same as the other screws so it really doesn't matter if you mix it up but I don't know I like to keep them the same all right so then this will just kind of pop right up it'll just lift straight off um, you 
can set that off to the side. All right, so what we got going on in here, this is going to be your belt down here, turntable belt. Uh, this is your turntable motor. The motor just gets the platter up to speed, 450 RPMs, and then the uh, sink plates take over, which are actually underneath the platter there. I'll show you them in a little bit. Um, this little tab right here is actually connects to the disc, and the disc is uh, laced with carbon so that it makes a signal pass through the through here, through the disc, back into the uh, circuitry and everything so that it knows uh, what kind of signal you're getting. But um, yeah, then your next step is you're going to want to take off these two screws back here so you, so you can get this thing off. Sometimes this thing is plastic, sometimes it's metal. Um, but you take that off and then this metal rod here will lift out with the stylus arm. You can just flip that over as well since it's all connected with the wires. Uh, and then this part just rides on top. Well, it rides on top of this plastic piece, but underneath this top, this bar, as you can see there, how that works. So I'll be right back again. Okay, so I got that taken off with the screws. I set it aside, and I flipped this over, but actually, uh, I can see I left the stylus inside. It's actually, it's probably a good idea to take your stylus out before you remove this, just so that it's doesn't get bumped or anything it just opens up like that and lifts straight out and you can just set that off to the side there that way you don't have to worry about it getting nicked or whatever all right so we'll just set that like that all right and then your next step is going to be to lift the platter out oh wait sorry you got to take this off first my bad i'll grab another thing for that so as you can see, these are really small screws, um, and they're very uh, thin material, so they come off very difficultly since they've been on for so long, and uh, they tend to strip. So I use a size one, number one. Phillips screwdriver and uh, I'll set you down over here so I can show you how to do it. Is this chair in the way? Let's get that out of here. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hello. You're upside down. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, good enough. Okay, so want to take something that's got some weight to it, I don't know, like another screwdriver or a rubber mallet or something, you want to set your screwdriver in there, make sure it's in the right spot, and then just give it a good whack, like that to kind of seat it, and then turn, and all right, we got lucky, that one came out. Uh, I do sell replacements of these if you do end up stripping them. Uh, I have another video that shows you how to drill them out and then replace them. But this seems to be the best method to get these things out of here. Once those are out, uh, this piece here will just kind of rotate and this whole thing just kind of springs up and falls all apart and everything. Um, sometimes there'll be one solid uh, rubber washer thing, sometimes there'll be this two-piece setup, sometimes this metal piece will look a little differently. Uh, it all depends on what model you got and when it was made. <sighs> but for the most part it's all going to be the same, you can take all that off. Set it off to the side here. And don't forget the little spring. Okay, and then now it will lift off. Um, it is a little difficult to do one handed, so I'm going to set you down again. But um, yeah, basically, you just want to lift straight up, and then the edge is going to hit this bar, so you just kind of wedge it bar out of the way a little bit, lift her straight up, you've got your turntable belt there, and then you can flip it over, make sure everything looks okay, make sure your 
shaft's not bent, it's not like falling out. It's good. So there's these are the two sink plates right here and they do an alternating current in there and then there's a magnet on the inside rim of the platter and the sink plates will alternate current between this magnet and that keeps the platter spinning so the motor doesn't actually push the platter it just gets it up to speed that's why you don't usually have to replace this turntable belt um, I do sell them if you ha are having issues uh, I have had it where the, I've replaced the turntable belt and it's worked just fine. So it does happen occasionally, but the more common problem is this uh, magnetic rim in here, this magnetic strip, will actually lose its magnetism over time. And so then the platter doesn't spin fast enough and it'll give you a black and white picture or a rainbow color picture. Um, so the first thing I always do is try to change the, a different platter and see if that fixes it. And if that doesn't fix it, you might have to adjust your sink plates. Because um, if you move them closer together or further apart, it will make the platter speed up or slow down. Uh, and then, like, finally, if nothing that none of that works, then I try changing the belt. Because it almost is never the belt. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, you can see down in here, there's this piece here you can take this off if you want and clean in there I don't usually do that this is the same size and yeah but I'll take it off just so you can kind of see what it looks like and then that's the little uh, little gear in there where my little screwdriver go but this whole thing will come out and try not to lose it But it just sits in there and that's the uh, the metal ball bearing yeah anyways I won't screw around with that we'll make the video too long but um, yeah you can clean that off and then the other thing you would want to do is with your platter uh, you're gonna want to push uh, your little screwdriver through the hole and pop out this uh, little it's kind of like a ball pin but it's like a plug kind of deal there is a I don't suppose you can see in the hole there but there is like a hex screw in there with a hole in the middle and that actually adjusts your platter height, which you don't usually have to do with the FG models, but that's how you do it if you ever need to. Um, so you got to have something really thin to push it through. Ah, I like this little stick on my compressed air. That'll probably work. Uh, nope, even that's too big. I need something thinner than that. Or if you have a strong enough magnet. Oh, let's see here. This this is the screwdriver I usually use for this. It's this little one. If you have a strong enough magnet, you might be able to just pull it out. Uh, nope. Too much. Uh, Forty years of. Forty years of dried lubricant will do that, I guess. Maybe. I thought that's the one I usually use. <laughs> All right, well, if this little tiny Allen wrench isn't small enough, then nothing is. like a little greased up ball bearing thing that goes in there kind of looks like a bullet or something 
So I usually take a Q-tip and I clean all the gunk out from the inside of there and all the gunk off of this. And then you put a little... I'll be right back. Okay, so I got that all cleaned up. Uh, I got my little ball bearing thing all cleaned up. I used the Q-tip, cleaned out inside there, uh, cleaned off the shaft. Uh, I got this put back in. Uh, next thing you want to do is take some Omni Lube 350. Uh, this one came from John Stevens. I do sell new bottles of it. Um, if you need some, otherwise, uh, if you go to a craft store or hobby store and get some sewing machine oil, that'll work as well. Uh, it just doesn't last as long as this, so you have to reapply, like, I don't know, this will usually last a couple of years. Uh, if you do sewing machine oil, I'd probably say maybe once a year. Just take it apart and put fresh lubricant on. And I usually just cover the, the shaft all the way around. And then I do a little dab on the inside. Sorry about my cameraman skills. I'm not, not a professional. Alright, so then the next part is the hard part. You got to um, put the belt back on. Oops, see I already dropped it. See, it already popped right back out. Where'd it go? I didn't even hear it fall. Anyway, so the next part, uh, you want to put your turntable uh, belt back on. And then you're going to want to flip it over. And that little ball bearing will keep falling out. So the way I do it is I actually set the player up on its side. Oh, I didn't put the ball bearing in. Duh. Wow get with it all right so what I do is I usually set the player up on its side uh, let's see if I can do this one-handed without breaking anything oh man things are getting sketchy here okay there we go so got the player up on its side like that and then you want to try to slide oh yeah I was also going to mention this white board in here uh, is covering up some electronics. There's a fuse and stuff in there. Uh, some, this one actually has a nice um, like cover, but uh, sometimes it'll just have a sheet. Just have a sheet like this. Here's one. It'll just have a sheet like this covering it. And uh, over time, as you can see, it will warp. And then when your platter will rub on it, it'll be kind of loud while, while it's playing. But um, this piece isn't actually necessary. It was just like a to meet code or whatever so you can just take this off and leave it off if it's making noise this one's got a nice plastic cover on it. that's way better um, so I'm just gonna leave that alone but yeah so then you just want to kind of put this on as straight as possible because what's gonna happen is uh, it'll go through that little ball bearing and then you have to try to line it up and go straight in and It'll have resistance, but if you turn it and kind of rotate it, it'll click in and drop down. So that's when you know you got it in all the way. And again, you're just going to have to kind of pry this bar back a little bit to get it in there. But I'll, I'll see if I can do it here. I don't know if you'll be able to see me see me do it. If I can set this here without it falling over. Uh -oh. Um, somewhere, maybe, maybe not. That's not going to work either. I don't know. I'll just be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so I got it in. It clicked in all the way. Uh, you can tell it's in all the way because it's down a little further. And it spins really nice. Doesn't make any noise or anything. I got my belt. I got my belt looped back on there. And then the next step is to just put everything back. I just lay it back down, put everything back, and then I'll show you what you do after that's done. Okay, one other thing that I just want to show you. Um, this little pad right here is actually your stylus cleaning pad. It's like felt or some kind of material. But um, basically every time your uh, stylus arm comes back to the home position, the stylus needle will sweep across this little pad and then it goes back like that when it's not in use. So this actually keeps your stylus clean, so you just want to make sure that there's no like 
um, little hairs or gunk or anything like built up on this and that it's nice and nice and pretty looking like that basically all right so the easiest way to put this back together is to just set it in there like that put your spring in uh, set this one off to the side a little bit set this one off to the side a little bit and then you put your plunger in and you just kind of hold it down and then slide these around it until you can get one of the screw holes to line up and then put the screw back in okay so another thing i want to mention um when you're putting this screw back in right here sometimes there is a grounding uh, strap that goes right underneath it make sure you get that back in as well uh, this one doesn't have one for some reason and then i also want to mention if you're using a drill like i'm using make sure you hand start your screws because if you just try to start them with the drill or the impact or whatever it can strip them out so just make sure you hand start them first and then you can finish them off with the drill and just go till they're snug they don't have to they don't have to be super tight like that all right so once that's all back together the only thing i have left is the case screws um, you want to rotate your player around so you're looking at the servo belt here and then i have another video that shows how to replace the server belt servo belt uh, which i do offer a kit uh, that looks like this uh, it's going to be a belt and some little plastic washers and that's because the old belt is kind of concaved uh, to fit that uh, that kind of arched uh, gear there and the new belts are flat so basically i have you put some washers uh, between the belt and the edge of the Oh, this one actually looks a little bit different, but yeah, usually there'll be like a metal shaft. Oh, down on the bottom there, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong spot. Down on the bottom there, there's a metal shaft where the motor comes through. Uh, you just put some washers back there uh, to keep it from riding back and coming off of the top gear. But yeah, I explain all that in another video, so be sure and watch that one. Uh, the only thing I have left to do then, after I change that, is put the cover back on. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, I do also usually do... Um, just like a little drop of the Omni Lube uh, right there. Um, so when the stylus arm slides, it kind of lubricates this a little bit. It makes it move a little bit better. And then you also want to do some, uh, uh, you want to get yourself some, all right, so this is the original grease that RCA used. This is called Rikon O Grease, and it's actually like orange colored. You can see it right right there it's kind of like orangish red but they no longer make this anymore so uh, I recommend you get some white lithium grease actually if you can find it this is the second best this is phono lube um, this is going to be slightly better than your white lithium grease but they actually don't make this anymore either for some reason I don't know why so you should be able to find this at any hardware store auto parts store anything like that uh, it's just multi-purpose lubricant white lithium grease and it's actually white so but just take a q-tip and reapply it wherever you see this orange wherever you see the orange lubricant just put a little bit more on there um so a little bit on that gear there and then there's some gears uh, where's the other spot i thought there was one more on this thing maybe that's it maybe just that one spot Oh, there's a little bit like down in there you can see and just to kind of lubricate this shaft this is the shaft that's going to hold your uh um sorry i forget what they're called now um basically when you flip the switch upside down that shaft uh, will move and there's little cams it's got the cams on it and there's little cams that connect to switches and those switches will engage like play and stop and stuff and then they also make the platter move up and down as you rotate the switch but those cams are going to be right down in there those little black things there are your cams and they are very difficult to adjust so if like your switch is all the way up in the 
uh, play position, but it's not actually playing, then your cams are probably out of alignment. And that happens because people that don't know what they're doing will take a disc and they'll shove it in. And they'll think they're supposed to leave the disc in and they'll try to mash this thing up to play and it'll throw those cams out of alignment. And so then you got to get in there with a little tiny Allen wrench and adjust them. And uh, Tony Fleetwood has a video on it that I have linked in my on my website on how to adjust those. But I think that about does it. You can also put a little bit of uh, lubricant on the turntable motor. There's a little spot. And I don't know if you can see it now that I took the thing off. But there is a little spot right behind the gear for the turntable motor with a little indentation where the lubricant goes and you just take like a syringe and put that in there and that's about it really um if you want to go a step further you can actually flip the player upside down and take the bottom cover off uh, actually i'll do that with this because i want to see what's rattling around down there so give me a second okay so if you just flip the player over there's going to be four screws uh, right here right here right here and right here you can Remove those. Um, sometimes you'll be missing some of these rubber feet, uh, in which case I usually just pull all the rest of them off and I put uh, some like furniture, like felt furniture pads, or you can get some other like sticky rubber ones too uh, at pretty much any store. But yeah, when you take this off, it just lifts, this front part here will lift up. And then you got to clear your two little uh, coaxial plug-ins. And then you got to clear your power cable over there. So it kind of slides towards the back. And then off to the side, clear your power cable. Come on, little fella. There we go. All right, so that's what the bottom looks like. You can see uh, this will operate if you turn the switch. It goes forward and back. Um, and there's also Rikon grease on here too if you want to put some fresh uh, lubricant on there. That just helps it slide back and forth. And that's really about all there is for the bottom of the machine. Sometimes this is really dusty. You can take a can of air and blow that out. This is just the fan to keep the motor cool. Um, that's about all you really have to do under here. Uh, I have seen where people will uh, lubricate the turntable shaft from the bottom here. Um, I think you can actually just go right in through right in through the hole there. Just put a couple drops of lubricant with a syringe. But it's a lot... Of, I've, I've never done it like that. I've heard you can do it. I've never done it. It's actually a lot easier just to take the whole platter and everything off. Oh, here's what's rattling around. This piece came off. Okay, this is actually supposed to be connected right here, and then it pulls this lever forward and back. So I'm going to have to figure out how that attaches. I'll have to look at another player and figure that out. But you shouldn't have that problem. That's the first time I've seen that. But yeah, that's how you do a basic uh, service on the player. This one's dated right there. Looks like January 19th, 1983. That would make this player 40 years old this year. Alright, um, that's it. Thanks for watching.